heard a super interesting story from Russell Brunson several years ago, and he called it plata o plomo. It means silver or lead. Now, if you follow the Mexican drug cartel, which hopefully you don't follow the Mexican drug cartel, but there's a lot of corruption in Mexico, and they kind of run the show in a lot of cities. Let's say that you go to a small town, there's a sheriff, who's a good guy, he's a good guy. He's got a nice dog, he's nice to his wife, he's a good guy. But then the drug cartel comes to town, and they basically give him two options. They say, this is our town now, and you are either going to take this silver and do what we say, and be totally corrupt, and your town will cry, or you get lead, right? silver or lead. And lead means you and your family die. Now, is that morbid? Yes, it's morbid. But sometimes asking really hard questions gets really cool answers. Ask yourself this if you have a small business. What are you capable of if your back was against the wall and the stakes were super, super high? See, small business owners, they set goals, but they kind of do it weird. Some people set goals that are way too small, which doesn't make sense. And other people set goals that are unrealistically too high because they don't have any context. They don't know how to set goals. In fact, I think setting goals in general has some problems. Maybe a better question you could ask yourself is what are you capable of? That's question number one. And question number two is, if you were to go all in with everything you're capable of, would it would the result be worth it at all in the first place? Because, you know, I have a t-shirt. It says, it doesn't matter how hard it is. It only matters if it's worth it. I even had this design printed on shirts for my kids because this concept is so important to my family and I. So I want to ask you, what is your capacity, right? You might have a goal to grow 10% next year, but is that really what you're capable of? And if you're capable of way more, why isn't your goal higher? It's okay if it's not, but ask yourself that question. One of my business partners, Brandon Vaughn, took over a small business from his dad. His dad had a heart attack and he couldn't work anymore. So Brandon bought his business. It was only doing a hundred thousand dollars a year. And Brandon built this whole elaborate business plan, you know, thinking small because he didn't know anything yet. And he built this whole plan and he took it to his dad. He said, dad, I'm going to grow this company. We're going to crush it. We're going to do 120,000 next year. Right. <laughs> Looking back now, it's hilarious because in just six short seasons, Brandon took that company from 120,000 a year to 500,000 a month. Right now he set a tiny goal, but he did it on accident because he didn't realize what he was capable of. Of. And you are never going to realize what you're capable of unless you put yourself in uncomfortable situations and try to do big, hard things that freak you out. But it's a really interesting question, isn't it? What is your plata or plomo capacity? What are you capable of if you have to win or everything bad happens, right? I don't want bad things to happen to you, but you got to ask harder questions to get better answers. So in 2015, I sold a business and moved to Costa Rica. Now you got to keep in mind, we have a bunch of kids and me and my wife had never really been outside of our home state of Michigan, but we're crazy. And we felt like God told us to move to Costa Rica. Don't judge me. God really did tell us. At least we think he did. So we get on an airplane and we fly to Costa Rica. Once we get there, we realize some really interesting things. Now, Latino culture is really interesting, but there's some good parts and there's some not so good parts. One of the good parts is they're super family oriented, which is amazing. You know, the McDonald's we went to in Costa Rica had a had a pregnant lady on their on their parking sign, like they had a handicap parking and a pregnant lady parking. Ah. That's so precious. And I think that's really cool. But some of the other things we noticed was that the mentality was totally different all through Latin America. And there's a lot of poverty in these countries. And it's really interesting. So the telephone poles are just a little too skinny and the roads are just a little too skinny. And the infrastructure there just isn't that great. There's traffic jams, but no one's particularly stressed out about it. You know, they're not driven drivers like the entrepreneurs in America in terms of their mentality, right? But they love family. So I'm having this internal conflict, like, gosh, they could, it could be like this, but it's like this. It could be so efficient, but it's not. So I don't have an answer to that, but here's the point. What would the Costa Rican people be capable of if they had no choice but to crush it? So my wife and I have five kids and sometimes we get asked, why do you homeschool your kids? And I got to thinking, hmm, why do I homeschool my kids? Well, maybe because I want them to have an unfair advantage. I don't know. You ever think about that? Here's the deal. Teachers generally are good. They have a teacher's heart. They want to teach, but the system is freaking bad. Think about this. Why do we group kids through an assembly line based on age? If you go back and study the Prussian model of education, just Google it. Yeah, go ahead, Google it, you can pause this and come back. This is where the origin of modern public schools comes from. And they group kids into little groups based on age and they push them through an assembly line. So when they're 18 years old, they come out as compliant little factory workers. And I'm not okay with that. That doesn't make sense to me. One of the advantages of homeschool is that my older kids are with my younger kids all the time. My older kids learn how to teach and how to have patience and how to communicate with kids of all ages and adults. My younger kids learn how to speak like bigger kids because they're not surrounded by baby talk or kids their own age all day. There's so many benefits. Sometimes people say, well, homeschooled kids are weird. Have you been to a public school? Are you not noticing that the majority of people are super freaking weird and disturbed and it's a, it's a, it's a crap show? So here's the deal. If you're a small business owner, it's hard enough to hold it all together. I'm not telling you you have to homeschool. I'm not preaching at you that you have to homeschool. But I do know this. If you want your kids to have an unfair advantage, they need to know things other kids don't know so they can do things other kids can't do. And I think we need to expect a little bit more out of our kids. The word teenager itself is only about 100 years old. And then in the year 1712, there wasn't 32-year-olds living in their mom's basement eating Hot Pockets 
parents making online comments about political issues, right? We live in a weird world, and I want our kids to be producers, not consumers. Can your kid be successful if he goes to public school? Of course, because you can crush it as a parent. However, there's massive benefits to teaching your kids at home because the public system, the government indoctrination system, is primarily helping to indoctrinate your kids and help them memorize things. Memorization can be helpful, but that's not how you learn. I want my kids to think asymmetrically, to think out of the box, learn how to create solutions to problems that they're not even responsible for so they can capitalize on it and change the world forever. I want my kids to be movement makers and job creators and world changers. What say you? Do you want your kids to do that? Homeschool is not the only way, but these are important conversations we should have.